Sabbath all? Sabbath. All right. Um, shall we begin with a short word of silent prayer? Amen. All right, so this week we'll continue with our series on Daniel chapter 11. So last week um, we went over some points and um, most of the stuff on the left side of this slide, as you, as you can see here, we went through the, the four kings and, and that, that is spoken of, of in, in verse 2. And it says, and the four shall be far richer than they are. And, 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 and in this order is Cambyses, Phosmertus, Darius, and then, um, amen, yes, yes, the great. And then, then after that, you have, you have, you have the, the goat, um, the goat come up now. And now you have this one, one king. And from that one king, there comes four. And um, Rashad touched <clears throat> on some of these wars here, and now we'll finish with them um, in verse from verse 12, on, 12 and 13. So, all right, so most of what we'll look at is on the right side of, of, of the screen here with, with Rome, and that is the main focus of of what um the lord showed on to um uh, uh, to d daniel. daniel amen and showing rome so <clears throat> let's let us begin going verse 12 it says and when he hath taken away the multitude his heart shall be lifted up and he shall cast down many ten, ten thousands but he shall not st he but he shall not be strengthened by it and the he is speaking about in verse 11. And this was speaking about Ptolemy because this is where he just now won a war against the king of the north. And, and, um, and then when, when he won this fight, his heart was lifted up, as the verse says. But because of this, he, he also go, um, because of this, he shall not be strengthened by it. And, and because his heart is lifted up, he shall go and cast down many ten thousands. So let's go look what, um, what is said upon upon this point. Can someone read the first quote here? Ptolemy lacked the prudence to make make a good use of his victory. Had he followed up his success, he would probably have become master of the whole kingdom of Antiochus. Content with making only a few menaces and a few threats. He made peace that he might be able to give himself up to the uninterrupted and uncontrolled indulgence of his brutish passions. Thus, having conquered his enemies, he was overcome by his vices, and forgetful of the great name which he might have established, he spent his time in feasting and eating. Amen. So this is fulfilling the portion where it says, where it says, but he shall not be strengthened by it, by this win against um Verse 11, speaking about, I think it's, this was, the northern king was Antiochus Magnus. I believe it was Magnus. This was the north. And then Ptolemy comes. I can't, I can't remember which, I think it's Philippator. Yes. This is Ptolemy Philippator. This is verse 11 I'm speaking of. Verse 11, um, the south is the victor. And now 
because of this victory, he lifts himself up. But before, before he's not strengthened by it, there's this phrase in here. It says, and he shall cast down many ten thousand. So this, this phrase in this verse, we have to understand what, what this means. And keep in mind, as we look through all these verses, as of now, we're just going through the natural history. So then after we look at the natural history, what then sh should we see from it? The spiritual. Amen. Because the natural points 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 on to the spiritual. So all these verses here, er, um, every single verse in here is teaching something spiritual of, of, of the war between who? Christ and Satan. That's what Swinton went over last, last Sabbath. These... That is the two spirits that is in, 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 this, um, in this earth. And this chapter is showing you these two spirits warring in this earth. Okay, it says, his heart was what? Lifted up by his success. But he was far from being strengthened by it. For the, um, in, amen, use, use he, he made of it, caused his own subjects to rebel against him. So, the southern king comes here, and now he wins, and then, and then he uses this win in a horrible way. And then this caused a civil war in, 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 um, in, in, in his own camp. It says, but the lifting up of, of his heart was more, um, more especially manifested in his, amen, with the who? the Jews. So when he lifts his lift lift up himself, this is really showing forth when he goes goes forward and attack the, the Jews. And then yeah, and then continuing on it says, um coming to Jerusalem, he he there offered sacrifices and was very what? Desirous of Entering into the most holy place of the temple, contrary to the law and and religion of that place, but being though with great um, amen, restrained, he left the place, burning with anger against the whole nation of the Jews, and immediately commenced against them a terrible and relentless persecution. So, because he was not let in into the most holy place. He goes forth and destroy many. So clearly, we, we should be seeing spiritual things from this. We, we should be seeing the Son of Law from this immediately, because as we keep out um, this 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 southern southern rule, which is all, this, this is also showing Satan. Once we try to keep out Satan out of our hearts, what shall he do? Go forth and war. That's the that is it. Um, yeah. He, he shall go forth and war against us because, because we want to keep him out of our hearts. But this is also sh showing the church at, at large. All right. So um, I have not put every single bit, bit um, here. So these things are here so that, so that you might look at it and then go back and look at these things for yourself as well. So we won't read every single part of it. Okay, so, all right, so now in verse, so now we see in verse 12 that the South wins, but then the South, w within the South, there's a civil war, and within the civil, in the same time of the civil war, the, the Southern King goes forward to go and kill the Jews because, because the Jews kept him out. All right, so now Dan 11, verse 13. It says, For the king of the north shall return and shall set forth a what? Multitude greater than the former, speaking of verse 11, and shall certainly come um, after certain years with a great army and with much riches. All right, can someone read this, please? DAR 230.2. Eastern parts from the, in their obedience, will that lead us for any enterprise? 
when you're on the cliff and you swim to the shore of Egypt. And thinking this too good an opportunity for enlarging his dominion, he let slip. He let slip, he raised an immense army greater than the former, for he had selected many forces and acquired great riches in Egypt and Africa, and his Egypt and Africa, and set out against Egypt, expecting to have an easy victory over the infant king. How he succeeded, we shall presently see. For here, new complications enter into the affairs of these kingdoms, and new actors are introduced upon the stage of history. Amen. So between verses... 12 and 13, there's this 14-year span of, of peace. So it jumps over this 14-year year span. Now in verse 13, I'm just going to take out some of the key, the key um, players and the key points. You have Ptolemy Epiphanes. And he's the and he's a child. And how how old is he? Four or five. Four or five. Four or five years old. So now the king of the north comes now and raises the, this army to go and take down Egypt because hey, this is gonna be easy. The king is only four or five years old, and 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 this king cannot defend his his own realm. So this is an easy win, correct? And there's a saying in 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 th this earth. It is as easy as taking candy from a baby. from a baby. So this is what the king of saw. So then he went forth to raise a great great army to go and try to take take the the southern land, so that he he m might be the master of all the realms. Because Rashad went over, um, and he um went over last week and showed that the the north the northern king kingdom was of north. East and West, and the Southern Kingdom was just was just the South Egypt by itself, and then this is how it showed. This is where it came to only the North and the South. So the only thing he had left was the South, so that he might be master of the whole known world at that time. Go ahead. Oh yes, oh yes, yes, amen. And riches. Amen. So now this should lead your mind to verse forty. And also to um, 40, I think, two or three, one of the two. But, okay. So, so now this, the king of the north, just as Suna was saying, um, yeah, Antiochus comes back now. Just as he's saying, he has greater army and riches. Okay. But another key thing that is brought up, brought in here is that there is new what? It says new complications and new actors. And now this is where there's a shift on this earth. And this is a turning point. And when turning points come, what, what comes at that same time? Light for that time is given. All right. So there's a new actors um, are, are upon the stage of history. And this is what we'll see as we go along. Dan 11, 14. It says, and in those times they shall stand up against the king of the south. Um, excuse me. There shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the rousers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish a vision. But they shall fall. So, all right. Can I read it for this paragraph here as well? Proposing to take the part which lay nearest and most convenient to him. 
Here was a rising up against the king of the south sufficient to fulfill the prophecy, and the very event beyond doubt which the prophecy intended. Amen. So now in verse 14 you have these men rising up. There's a league between Antiochus, which is the king of the north, yeah. and Philip, Macedon. So we have the east, sorry, you have the north and the west. Yeah, because he, he reigned over them. Say it again. Uh, yes, amen. All right. So, do I have this too early? Okay, no, yes, I have this here on purpose. Okay, so in the top right corner, you have the king of the north, Antiochus. And the bottom right, this is Philip of Macedon. So these two men here are the ones that leagued up together to go, to go and take down the king of the, of the south, this infant king, because it is an easy, easy fight. It's an easy win. So they join forces to go and take down, take down this, this, the, 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 the king of the south. But however, the, the new player that's brought in in this time is Rome. And, and it says that, and the robbers of the people shall establish the vision. And at, at, at this time, the one, the one who fought against these, these two lead, lead kings is th this man, Titus Quincentius. Quinstius and um, Flaminius, yeah, so Titus, I'm just calling him Titus. So the first one that comes up, you see here, is named Titus. And then later on in, and later on in verses 20, you shall see Titus at, at near, yeah, near the end of, of, of Rome being Imperial Rome as well. So we have a Titus in the beginning and a Titus at the end of Imperial Rome. And he is the one that goes forward and takes down these two, these two um, kings that are confederated to go take down the king of the south. Okay, continuing on. All right, and now I just have a map here of just showing the, the, the large expanse of what um, the king of the north had with, with Philip to go take down Egypt. And you see the whole thing here saying the, Seleucid Empire, it takes, it takes most, most of this whole map. And then in the far left, the, the, the top left you see in purple, it says, yes, amen, Macedonia. Macedonia. So this, this whole swath and, uh, of land here is going against this one nation. And it seemingly seems like, hey, you should win because it's, it's this, it is the north east and west coming against this one one small area but however as as we read there are new actors upon the scene and this new actor is a linchpin or yeah is the hinge that that turns history at this at this time and um the south is the is at the bottom left corner all right all right can someone read D.A.R. 231, paragraph 1? A new power is now introduced, the robbers of thy people. Literally, says Bishop Newton, the breakers of thy people. Far away on the banks of the, the Tiber, a kingdom had been nourishing itself with ambitious pro projects and dark designs, small and weak at first. It grew with marvelous rapidity and strength and vigor, reaching out cautiously here and there to try its prowess and test the vigor of his warlike arm, till conscious of his power, it bore red its head among the nations of the earth, and seized with invincible hand the helm of their affairs. Henceforth the name of Rome stands upon the historic page, destined for long ages to control the affairs of the world, and exert a mighty influence among the nations, even to the end of time. Amen. So this nation here that, that, that starts, out, starts off small, is here until the end of, of, of the world. And it says, as Uriah Smith um, says here, or Newton says here, it says that the robbers of the people is a new power. All right. 
Next paragraph, it says, Rome what? Spoke. Rome spoke. And Syria and Macedonia soon found the change um, coming over the aspect of their dream. So keep that in mind that when Rome speaks, a change happens. Because Rome is just trying to um, copy um, Christ. Because when Christ speaks, a change happens. So when Rome speak, when when Rome spoke, uh, the chain a change happened in in this earth immediately. It says the Romans. Excuse me, a Amen. In 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 Amen. Behalf of the young. Young king of Egypt determined that that he sh should be um, amen. From the ruin, by 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 by, and um Philip, and and as he gives the day here, this was in B.C. two hundred. And this small nation is the one that goes forward to defend this small child um, against, against the, the North and Western kings. So I have this video here, hold up, to go and show how Rome, Rome started as a small, small nation. And it just ends up filling up the whole earth. But also note what happens to Rome as, as time goes on. So, so, so now it starts in... 510 um, BC, and then it goes all the way down, down to 4, 480 AD. Hold on, let me see if I get it to play. Okay. So, as the quote says, it starts out small, and this nation rules the whole earth, and it just continually expands until it fills the whole earth. Yes. Okay, now the color changes. It's continually filling the earth. And then when it hits 300 AD and, and onward, now look at the change that, that takes place. It's not? It's not moving? Ah, uh, that sucks. It is? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's playing all mine at this time. But... All right, so, so there's one thing, this map is, is nice because it shows how Rome expands, but, but it also shows that when Rome turns, turns, turns from a state power to a church state power, how Rome changes, where Rome, Rome, Rome as a state power expands and expands and expands, but once now the church begins, begins to sit, sit upon Rome, Rome um, implodes basically upon itself, and then it regrows, and and it and it is showing how sin changes its form as well. Because before it is this, it it's this beast here, but then it slowly changes, and this beast begins begins dying rapidly, and then this beast comes up and it grows again. So it is showing you how 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 Rome Rome shall shall work in this time as well, which is just showing how Satan will work on the minds of men in this time. So the state power shall, shall rule and shall grow and grow and grow large, start off small and grow large. But then once it changes into a church power, a church state power, this is now when it, the, the state dwindles and then the church grows more above the, the, the state. I really wish y'all could see it, but anyways, let's continue on. All right, so yeah, this is a map showing showing where where Rome was, but then Rome ends up taking the whole swath of land here towards um, towards the east as well. All right, so now to to establish the vision, can someone read this quote here, please? Two thirty two, paragraph one. Being more prominently than other people, 
the subject of Daniel's prophecy. Their first interference in the affairs of these kingdoms is here referred to as being the establishment or demonstration of the truth of the vision, which predicted the existence of such a power. Amen. So from this point onward, <clears throat> the rest is dealing with Rome. And this is a rule we have to keep in mind because as you go along, some men have strayed from this and now, and now applied it to um, apply these things to, to wrong, wrong, um, wrong, um, wrong, yeah, wrong things, and now that has led them down a false and wrong, wrong path. But, but let's continue on. Can someone read, read the next one? Amen. So, this phrase can be seen in two ways. It could be showing the fall, the fall of Rome, or, or it could be showing the fall of, of the leagued um, kings, Antiochus and Philip. And both is, is true. So Rome establishes this vision, and and um, this is shown by Rome is shown throughout from verse fourteen all the way down to 45, onward to Daniel 12, verse 1. All right. Okay, yes. This is where the... One second, sorry. Ah, I was supposed to be flipped. Okay, anyways. So, this is where this battle happened between um, the lead kings and Titus. And this battle was called the Battle of Paneum. And this is a battle that was used in time past to go and um, confuse minds upon, upon the light for this time. So therefore, this verse we have to understand much. And this fight, fight we have to um, le learn as well because it is, dealing, it, it is brought forth just when Rome, Rome is shown forth in, in, um, in, in verse um, f 14. So this verse is, this um, battle is linked with, with Rome from the start on to the end. So this is a battle that, that, that we must see. All right. All right. But we can skip, skip this quote for now and go to verse 15. Can someone read? Read the verse, please. So the king of the north shall come and pass up a mountain and take the most precious city, and the army of the south shall not withstand, neither the children of the people, neither shall there be any strength. Amen. So now come to verse 15, and it says the king of the north shall cast them out and take the most cities. Can someone read the quote, please? The tuition of the young king of Egypt was entrusted by the Roman Senate to M. Emilius Lepidus, who appointed as uh, an old and experienced minister of that court, his guardian. His first act was to provide against the threatened of invasion of the two confederated kings, Philip and Antioch. And read the next one as well, please. To this end, he dispatched Scopus, a famous general of Aetolia, mm -hmm. then in the service of the Egyptians and to his native country to raise reinforcements to this army. Having equipped an army, he marched into Palestine for Assyria 
Antioch was being engaged in a war with Athens in Mysia, Asia, and reduced all Judea into subjection to the authority of Egypt. Amen. Okay, so now, so now, the king of the north comes here and he takes the most fenced cities, and the most fenced cities in this, showing that he goes into, sorry, no, sorry. No, I haven't touched that point as yet. All right. Let's continue on. Can someone re read this quote as well, please? Thus affairs were brought in, into a posture for the fulfillment of the verse before us. For Antioch is de desist desisting from the war with a power at the dictation of the Romans took speedy steps for the recovery of Palestine and the whole Syria from the hands of the Egyptians. Scopus was sent to oppose them. Near the source of the Jordan, the two armies met. Scopus was defeated, pursued to Sidon, and there closely besieged. Three of the ablest generals of Egypt, with their best forces, were sent to raise the siege, but without success. At length, Scopus meeting, meeting in, the, in the gaunt and intangible specter of famine, a foe with whom he was unable to cope, was forced to surrender on the dishonorable terms of life and peace. Whereupon he and his 10,000 men were suffered to depart stripped and naked. Here, here was the taking of the most famous city by the king of the north. The Sidon was, both in, his, in its situation and its defenses, one of the strongest cities of those times. Here was the failure of the arms of the south to withstand, and the failure also of the people which the king of the south had chosen, namely the Philistines and his forces. Amen. All right, so the chosen, um, the chosen forces of um, Egypt, these, these are the ones that shall not. Yeah, and, and, and it says, and, and the arms in the south shall not withstand. One second, sorry. Yes, the arms of the forces of the south shall not stand. So... Okay, yes. And these these men, his um his arms are his chosen. Scopus and the Aetolian Aetolian forces. And the king of the north, Antiochus, taking the fenced cities. The fenced cities he take is Palestine. He regains Palestine and Kowal, Syria. Okay, continuing on, Dan 11, verse 16. Can someone read this as well, please? This slide. Also, Egypt could not stand before Antiochus. The king of the north, Antiochus, could not stand before the Romans, who now came against him, making them no longer able to resist this rising power. Syria was conquered and added to the Roman Empire when Pompey, BC 65, required Antiochus the same power would also to stand in the Holy Land and consume it. Rome became connected with the people of God, the Jews, by alliance, B.C. 161, for which date it holds a prominent place in the prophetic calendar. It did not, however, acquire 
jurisdictions over Judea by actual conquest from BC 63 and then in the following manner. All right. So now verse 16. <clears throat> Showing how it's referring back to where the south could not withstand against the north, but the north can't withstand against this new power that rises up, which is Rome. And and I was bringing to view Pompeii. Now you have the north loses to Rome, and um. The south, the, the south lost, lost to the north, and now the north loses, loses to Rome. Yes, and now, and it says, but, but he that cometh against him shall do according to his will. But, and, and the he, the he, he that comes is Rome. Rome comes, comes against him, the him is the king of the north, and the he shall do according to his will, which is um, Rome. Rome shall do according to his will, and none shall stand before him. He shall stand in glorious land, which by his hand shall be consumed. And it brings forth these, these, um, the, these two events. The first event is BC, BC 65, with when um, Syria, Syria is conquered and now is added to the Roman power. And then B.C. 63, where now Judea, Judea is conquered and is added to, um, added, added to Rome's power as well. And now this, um, verse speaks, th this verse points, points forward down to verse 23, which, which will, will touch when we reach there at that time. So, Keep this in mind. When Rome is brought forth at its start, it says it shall do according to his will. And this is needed to understand as well, because when you get to verse 36, Uriah Smith applies that same phrase, phrase onto um, um, France. But no, this is also connected to Rome. So Rome, Rome, Rome at the start does according to his will, and Rome continually throughout, throughout, his old, throughout its whole reign does according to its own will. So if we take it, take take it here with with Rome, it it um passes down through throughout the whole history of Rome. So the Lord has these things in place so that when we get down to those verses, we are not we do not lose sight who who was there and 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 who was warring there. Amen. Okay, because many people have fallen because of this, because they take it and then apply these, these verses to, to, to France when it's really applied to Rome. And when you look at um, history itself and who fulfilled those things according to what um, the, the scripture says. All right, continuing on. So now this is, this is a verse we really have to keep in mind, verse 16. Um, because now you see, you see now the works of the Jews and the works of the Jews, um, in times past is showing forth who now the work of sin adventists, the natural Jews is showing spiritual Jews. So this verse, verse 16 is really for us is, is for Adventists as a whole, but it's also for those who understand verse 16 and 17. We have to understand verse 16 and 17 so that we do not repeat the errors of the natural Jews. So keep this in mind. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes. All right. And, and, but more, especially verse 17 as well, because verse 17 brings up the upright ones and, and, and the upright ones are those who understand. So the ones, the one, the ones who 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 would know are the ones who would end up aiding Rome. And this is what we'll see in, in verse 17 when we reach there. So it's really th this this chapter here is really needed 
for Saint Advent is at the end of the world. And this chapter is the foundation of that which the Lord has shown us since 1989. So these things we have to keep in mind and understand. So um, let's read the next quote on the next slide. D-A-R 234, paragraph 2. Can someone read this, please, loudly? Perceived yeah. of the claims of Aristobulus, but wish to defer decision in the matter till after his long desired expedition into Arabia, promising them to return and settle their affairs as soon as seemed just and proper. Aristobulus, following Pompey's real sentiments, hastened back to Judea, armed his subjects, and prepared for a vigorous defense, determined at all hazards to keep the crown which he foresaw would be adjudicated to another. Pompey closely followed the fugitive. As he approached Jerusalem, Aristobulus, beginning to repent of his course, came out to meet him and endeavored to accommodate matters by promising entire submission and large sums of money. Pompey, accepting this offer, sent Gabinius at the head of a detachment of soldiers to receive the money. But when that lieutenant general arrived at Jerusalem, he found the gates shut against him and was told from the top of the wall that the city would not stand to the agreement. Amen. All right, so now there's two men here. Who are, the, who are these two men? Amen. Hyrcanus and... Aristobulus. So Aristobulus is obviously against Rome, against Pompey coming to take him off of the throne. And, and now he, he comes here and shuts the gate against Rome so that Rome, Rome won't, won't enter into the glorious land. That's what verse 16 says, it says, and none shall stand before him, and he shall stand in the glorious land. And, and this is speaking about Rome, but the, 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 one, the one who showed forth Rome here was um, the man, was, yes, amen, Pompey. And, but the verse ends off saying, which by his hand shall be consumed. So even though he... Aristobulus, who was against Rome, closes the gates. We see from the verse that Pompey still um, gets entrance into Jerusalem and destroys it. So on the next slide, we'll look at Hyrcanus and his role in this. All right, so, oh yeah, I was supposed to, this verse was supposed to be back. So, um, you have... You have Rome here at the top, top, re top right, and then you have the king, the king of the north. I think this slide is supposed to be some, some back. But anyways. Can someone read this? Here, please. DA 234.3. Twelve thousand persons were slain. It was as expecting 
expressed in sight, observe, observes the historian to see the priest engaged at the time in divine service with calm hand and steady purpose pursuing the, their accustomed work, apparently unconscious of the, the wild tumult, though all around them their friends were given to the slaughter, and though often their own blood mingled with that of their sacrifices. Amen. Okay, so her can is here. Is is for who now? Her canister says, "Amen." He's he's there for the Romans to open the gates onto them. And if you have 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 your um, gates there wide for someone, you're saying, "I want this person in." So there's this group here who is then who is for Rome or for Pompeii. Yeah, when he came in, many were Amen. And once, once Rome came in, just as Canard saying, many were overthrown. Many people were slaughtered immediately. Amen. Amen. So this is, this is what I'm saying. Verse 16 and verse 17 is very needed to understand for the time in which we are in, literally right now. Because this is showing how Adventists will, will work. There will be a group of Adventists who is against Rome, but then there's a group of Adventists who will be for Rome. And one will let, let um, Roman, while the other will, will try to keep them out. And another thing of note here says that Hyrcanus was the... Um, the, the people that was with Hyrcanus was the majority. And the ones, ones to, um, to fight back Rome was in the minority. And another thing it says here, it says, at, at the end of three months, a breach was made in the wall. So once um, Rome, Rome comes up, it puts a breach in the wall. So that's, that's a whole topic in and of itself can study out and look at uh, the breach in the wall. So when, when, once this breach is, is there, Rome immediately comes in. And it is because of this group who is for, for Rome. Yes. Amen, yes. Right, so when you come to the Sunday, well, the Lord is going to have his name, my is right there, ready to repair that breach, which means that breach for all time has already been made. Ah, uh, yes, amen, yes. This is what he's teaching. Amen. Okay, now that I raise my mind, says something else, but all right. So we'll, okay, we'll, we'll read this last quote, and then we'll, then we'll stop here. All right, it says, Having put an end to the war, um, okay. Amen. Demolished the, the walls of Jerusalem, transferred several cities from the ju um, ju jurisdiction of ju Judea to that of Syria, and and imposed tribute on on the Jews. Thus, for the first time, was Jerusalem placed by conquest in 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 the hands of that power which was to hold, hold the glorious land in its iron grasp till it had utterly consumed it. Christ is the first and the last. So the first time the glorious land is, is um, conquered by Rome is, is teaching us of the last time when the glorious land shall be conquered by Rome. So this is why it's very important to understand verse 16 and 17, but, but the, the, the whole thing as well. But verse 16 and 17 clearly points out the works in which the Jews did. There was one for Rome, one against Rome. And the ones for Rome was in the majority, and they are the ones that opened the gate for Rome, Rome to come in. And once Rome came in, they demolished um, um, the, the land, and they were in the hands of the Romans from that point onward. Right. So we'll stop here for now. Um, and we'll pick up in verse 17, and we do 17 to 23 when we get back. Go ahead. 
But he can't. Amen. Amen. All right, let us close out with a word of prayer. Merciful Father in heaven, Lord, we give thanks for this day. For life of strength again, and I ask you may forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings, Lord. Please, O Lord, help us to keep these things in mind. See, see all these old things and see, um, see what shall fall on this earth soon. Please, O Lord, help us to, um, to walk in this light as well and to put down self um, at, um, at, at this, um, at this time, O oh Lord, and, and we ask all these things in your son's name we pray. Amen.